Hey, do you perform your conductivity measurement in compliance with USP 645? If yes, stay tuned into the video to know more about USP 645 chapter that defines the suitability of bulk water and sterile water samples through conductivity readings. Water conductivity must be measured accurately with calibrated instrumentation. You will require a conductivity meter whose resistance measurement has been verified with NIST traceable precision resistors, accurate to plus or minus 0.1% of the stated value. Additionally, the measurement system should have a conductivity resolution of 0.1 microsiemens per centimeter, or better, in a temperature accuracy of plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius. The conductivity sensor used must have a cell constant known within plus or minus 2%. This can be verified using a solution of known or traceable conductivity solution. This procedure will show you how to ensure that your conductivity sensor meets the requirements of USP 645. If the conductivity sensor you use has a certified cell constant, only a verification in a low conductivity standard is required. Measure the conductivity of the standard and compare it with its certified value. If the measured value is within plus or minus 2% of the certified value of the standard solution, then the verification is successful and the sensor can be used. If necessary, you can also perform a calibration in a low conductivity standard, like 84 micro siemens per centimeter, followed by a verification as described earlier. If the verification is not successful, check the following points. Ensure that the sensor and solution are stored at the same temperature before measurement. Make sure to use an unopened, not expired conductivity standard solution for calibration and verification. And condition every beaker prior to measurement to avoid any contamination. Ensure that no air bubbles are trapped between the sensor poles by gently shaking the sensor prior to measuring and using stirring during the measurement. Condition the sensor in deionized water for one hour to ensure pole wetting. The United States Pharmacopoeia 645 chapter defines the suitability of bulk water and sterile water samples through conductivity readings. The procedure mentioned under the section bulk water applies to purified water, water for injection, water for hemodialysis, and condensate of pure stream. It is a three-stage method. For stage one, conductivity and temperature are measured. If the conductivity at the measured temperature is lower than the table value, the water meets the requirements. This stage can be performed using a flow-through cell for an online measurement or performed in a suitable container without stirring. First, turn off the temperature correction in the meter settings. Ensure that no air bubble is present at the surface of the poles of the sensor. Perform the conductivity measurement. Compare the result with the conductivity value given in the limit table. While comparing, care must be taken that temperature value in the table is not more than the measured temperature, that is, check the next lower temperature value. The corresponding conductivity value would be the limit. If the result is not more than the table value, then the water meets the requirements. In our case, the temperature is 22.6 degrees Celsius, so the next lower temperature will be 20 degrees Celsius and the conductivity limit is 1.1 microsiemens per centimeter. Since the measured value is out of limit, we need to proceed with stage two. If stage one fails, one has to proceed with stage two. The measurements at this stage can be temperature compensated to 25 degrees Celsius 
or non-temperature compensated. If the measured conductivity is less than 2.1 micro siemens per centimeter, the water meets the requirements. For the stage two, transfer a sufficient amount of the water sample in a suitable container, such as a thermostatic beaker, that helps in maintaining constant temperature of water sample. Maintain the temperature at 25 degrees Celsius, plus or minus one degree Celsius, while stirring to obtain carbon dioxide equilibrium. We recommend to use a thermostat to do so. Note down the conductivity when the change in conductivity is not more than 0.1 micro siemens per centimeter per five minutes. Hence, continuous monitoring of the sample reading is required. If the final conductivity value is less than 2.1 micro siemens per centimeter, the water meets the requirements as per stage two. Here, the conductivity value exceeds 2.1 micro siemens per centimeter, so we need to proceed with stage three. In stage three, a small amount of KCl is added to the sample from stage two and a pH reading is taken while maintaining the temperature at 25 degrees Celsius. If the conductivity measured in stage two is not more than the table value at the measured pH, the water meets the requirements. If not, the water does not meet the test for conductivity. For stage three, it is recommended to measure pH within five minutes of the conductivity determination of stage two. It involves the pH measurement of the sample and hence requires a pH meter and a pH electrode adapted for samples presenting a low ionic strength. Calibrate the pH sensor according to USP 791. For example, use pH 4.01 and pH 7.00 buffers for calibration followed by a verification with an intermediate buffer, such as pH 5.00. Maintain the sample temperature at 25 degrees Celsius plus or minus one degree Celsius, and measure the pH after adding 0.3 milliliters of a saturated potassium chloride solution per 100 milliliters of sample. From the reference table, determine the limit conductivity value at the measured pH. If the conductivity value measured at stage two is less than the value determined from the table, the water meets the requirements of the test for conductivity. If the conductivity value is bigger than that, or if the pH is outside 5.00 to 7.00, then the water does not satisfy the requirements of USP 645. In our case, the pH value corresponding to conductivity value measured in stage two is between pH 5 and 7. So the water meets the requirements of USP 645. The procedure listed under section sterile water is intended for sterile purified water, sterile water for injections, sterile water for inhalation, and sterile water for irrigation. The sterile water is derived from purified water, packaged, and sterilized to prevent any microbial contamination. Hence, sterile water must be compliant with bulk water requirements before packaging. It is a single stage method. Maintain the sample temperature between 24 and 26 degrees Celsius while stirring to obtain carbon dioxide equilibrium. Then measure the conductivity. The passing criteria depends upon the nominal sample volume you may need to collect the water sample from multiple containers to reach enough volume to measure the conductivity. If the nominal sample volume is less than or equal to 10 milliliters, and if the conductivity is not greater than 25 micro siemens per centimeter, the water meets the requirements. If the sample volume is greater than 10 milliliters, and if the conductivity is not greater than five micro siemens per centimeter, the water meets the requirements. Let us make an example. Here, 
we use the thermostat to maintain the temperature at the required 25 degrees Celsius. The water sample is stirred to generate carbon dioxide equilibrium and the conductivity checked. When it does not change from more than 0.1 microsiemens per centimeter per five minutes, it is noted down. In our case, the sample volume is greater than 10 milliliters and the conductivity is less than five microsiemens per centimeter. The water meets the requirements. Mettler Toledo, as always, has come with complete solutions for its customers following USP 645. You can choose our standalone system, offering easy execution of all three stages with ready-to-use, predefined methods that guide you throughout the whole process. Just turn on the instrument, connect the sensor, Select the desired method and start the analysis. If you look for data integrity, our LabX software is the right choice. It offers three ready-to-use methods for hassle-free analyses with full traceability, as well as a single method including all three stages of USP 645. Finally, if you have a high-throughput sample analysis, our in-motion automated system will help you increase your work efficiency while eliminating operational and transcription errors. And if you get stuck somewhere during your analyses, our white paper will act as a guiding light. By using the 7 Excellence Meter with LabX and automation, Mettler Toledo offers a complete and easy solution to perform water quality testing as per USP 645 method, thereby reducing the possibility of errors and ensuring compliance and data integrity.